climate change is rapidly becoming a growing concern around the world. However, not many realise the magnitude of effects it could have on our ecosystems, especially relating to our farming and agricultural industries around the world. Only now are scientists beginning to turn their attention to this issue. In this programme, we're going to explore some of the issues at the heart of global warming, specifically relating to our natural ecosystems and our farming activity. Canaries are creatures that can sense upcoming disasters earlier than human beings, and they show unusual behaviours such as running away from something in a massive herd whether it is day or night. Droughts these days make ponds much shallower, which can kill all the aquatic organisms that live in the pond by letting the ultraviolet light penetrate through the surface of the pond, allowing it to penetrate more thoroughly throughout the pond. Butterflies are one of the major examples of these canary-like animals, partly because these widespread and artistic creatures have been studied specifically for the past few centuries. Droughts and flood can both lower the butterfly population. In the mid-70s, five of 21 species declined like this. Butterflies are also threatened from the slowly rising temperature and other pressures that restrict their area of range. Also, humble creatures like the dormouse can tell us something about global warming. There is half the population that there was in Britain since Carol's time. A part of this is because of the fragmentation of the trees, hedgerows wherein they mostly live. These move away up the north because the warm winter interferes with their hibernation. Many farmers are unaware of the risks that global warming presents to their industry. Many think that farmers can just adapt to suit the climate around them like our ancestors have done in the past. However, it's not quite as simple as that. In the past, scientists believed that the increased greenhouse gases produced by burning fossil fuels would improve conditions for plant growth. However, now we know that's not entirely true. A long-running experiment known as FACE, Free Air CO2 Enrichment Program, shows that crops can only take advantage of the extra CO2 with more minerals, especially nitrogen in the soil. CO2 has a profound effect on overall crop growth. This is because in a heavy carbon dioxide atmosphere, plants generally accumulate less biomass and find it harder to grow and multiply. Also, in rich CO2 climates, plants are generally lower in nutrients, such as magnesium and zinc. This is because there are enough trace elements in the soil entering the plant to keep up with the increased boost from photosynthesis. Therefore, in some climates we will see an increase in the growing season, but in many regions there will be a net loss in crop yield and overall change in the ecosystem. Geography will play a huge role in how these areas are partitioned. At present, most of the food's world, world's food crops are grown in areas around the tropics, however these areas are probably going to become much drier and hotter. These hot climates will then also experience heavy rainstorms and overall intense rainfall. These variable conditions will not support crop growth. The major areas of overall crop growth loss will be in the tropics, where between 42 and 73 countries will begin to lose out on their agricultural crop yield. By contrast, the more developed countries further north will experience a longer growing season and better crop growth, especially in the US and Russia. On the other hand, many non-agricultural plants thrive with more CO2. However, these plants are often not very useful. For example, many ivies and many more dangerous plants thrive on the extra CO2. On one final controversial note, scientists are looking into ways of genetically modifying food crops to survive the harsher climates that appear to be emerging. Over the last few decades, the vast and majestic rainforests of the tropics have been shrinking at an alarming rate. Although estimates vary, perhaps up to a million hectares of Amazon rainforest are slashed and burned every year. Every three years, an area the size of Belgium is removed. This does not include deforestation in other rainforests across the world. This contributes heavily to global warming. Not only has the amount of photosynthesizing trees been cut down, but also fires and newly exposed bacteria release copious amounts of carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide for several years. In Brazil, the amount of greenhouse gases released from the burning fossil fuels is merely a quarter of that released by mass deforestation. It currently isn't clear whether global warming is having any effects on rainforests. While some droughts have been recorded over the last several decades in the Amazon basin, none have had major effects. It is, however, fairly certain that any large 
increase in global temperature could destroy swathes of forest. The effect of global warming on forests towards the poles is more certain. Permafrost melt is causing massive stress on boreal forests and warming atmosphere is leading to more pest breeding and spreading diseases, which are killing trees. In addition to this, mountain forests are increasingly being affected by forest fires. Drought weakens the ability of trees to fight off these pests because the dryness means a weaker sap flow which is easier for the beetles to push through. Drought also increases the likelihood of forest fires which release a lot of greenhouse gas. Insects and fire are both parts of forest ecosystems. Indeed, many trees require insects to propagate their seeds. However, this recent increase could well spoil doom for many different plant species. Insects may have the best opportunity to reproduce during this warm and hot weather. Many bugs respond sensitively and strongly to temperature changes and humidity. Because of this, more parasitic diseases are already spread and you are likely to spread more in the future as the planet warms and moistens. Since man first recorded climate change, we have been working hard to stop and decrease it. The problem though is that climate change and global warming is increasing at a rate which is becoming harder and harder to stop. Humans are able to cope with this, however for many species of animals it means evolving to try and combat the change in the climate and their habitats. In places like the Arctic there are many animals that are able to survive the harsh and unforgiving climate, but for many they are they're now finding that their home is slowly fading away. The prime example of this is the polar bear. They have been known to swim for miles to get to land and now are finding hard to protect themselves from predators because they don't know, they don't have the food to keep them going. The areas such as these are, are known as biodiverse hotspots. There are 25 of these all over the world, ranging from mountains and tropics to coastlines and mid-latitudes. However, scientists are also studying biomes. There are four main biomes, forests, tundra, deserts and grasslands. Forests are mainly found covering most of Russia, North America and Canada. Grasslands cover most of Africa and Australia. They also cover parts of North America and Eurasia. Deserts cover a th fifth of the earth and are usually found where the air dries and sinks. Tundra is the cold highlands of the Arctic where only low root plants are able to survive. We've shown you how climate change is affecting our world's ecosystems and our farming industry. Our actions could well be driving our planet into certain doom unless we change how we act now. These maps show how Borneo's rainforests are slowly being cut down. It's shocking to see how much of our planet's biodiversity is being destroyed by our behaviour. If we don't stop soon, then it may be too late.